Hey guys, just wanted to do a really quick message today and uh, today I want to talk about something we usually don't talk about or it's like nobody wants to get into this conversation but this is the conversation about God and um, it's something that when people do post about these things, these topics, politics or God, it gets really crazy on Facebook and people have their statements. Now I wrote a book and at the end of the book, I actually recommend whoever is reading it to, to think about their own spiritual journey and that if you do have one, trust me, it'll enrich someone's life. And I imagine, like John Lennon, a world, and then he has his own things he imagines. I want to imagine a world where we all have respect for each other's faith, that we actually um, give applause and respect to someone who is looking for something deeper, something for something that even though you think is... Uh, you know, out there and very like metaphysical, it's actually because of witnesses, it can be more concrete than actual concrete. And so I want to talk about my own testimonial uh, in regards to, is there a God? And that this is something that if you're an atheist, if you're agnostic, if you're someone who already believes in God, hopefully this secures your faith. And for those of you who don't believe in God, the, the beautiful thing is that Hopefully you can just respect my story because I respect yours. I'm not, the, I'm not here to convince you that there is a God, but I, I want to share my story. And you have a story too, and there's a reason why you don't believe in God, and I should respect your story. But um, anyway, so I want to talk to you about the thing that happened to me in military school. In fact, I'm going to bring out something that I usually don't show everyone because my wife sometimes makes fun of it, but uh, it's just, you know, so this is a, a picture of me, um, if you guys can see this. Um, this is a picture of me in military school. I know you're going to make fun of the haircut, but um, um, I haven't seen this. This photo was taken in 2000, uh, and it had to do with me knowing God. And I'm going to be, a lot of maybe military school, I'm actually might, I might tag a few friends on here that are um, you know good friends of mine, and uh, that were in military school, so they might say, wow, what? he brought that photo up. But uh, there's a reason for it. And so what happened was, is that, you know, I was raised Catholic my whole entire life. And we're used to saying the Our Father, you know, Our Father in heaven, you know, holy is your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I'm, I was very accustomed to that. What I wasn't accustomed to is asking if he was actually there or using my own words when I pray. And so that's something that I wanted to do for the first time. And there was a really tough time in my life in military school. And I was about... I would say either 16 or 17 years old and uh, something happened where I really wanted to know if uh, God exists and here's the reality is that you know like I said whether whatever faith you're in uh, I think there comes a point where you really need to know for yourself and so uh, most of you like I said know me as an emotion code practitioner I don't dive into this type of topic but um, I feel like it could help someone today hopefully you can share this with someone and hopefully it enriches your life you know that's my wish and so what happened was, is I got on my knees and for the first time ever, I just asked, I said, you know, God, are you there? And it was just kind of like a child, uh, the same way Jesus cried out to his father, um, you know, Abba, you know, it's kind of like, it's basically terms of endearment, you know, like, like daddy, like, you know, and I said it like that person, like it's like father, you know, I didn't say like, you know, holy father in heaven with crowns. I didn't, I didn't say that. It was just kind of like. Supposedly you're a father and supposedly you're God. If you're out there, like, let me know you exist. But here's, here's the contingency that I kind of did in the prayer. And some of you guys might say, oh, you shouldn't test God. But I needed to know. And uh, it's almost like my life depended on it. I remember even a time where I didn't want to live anymore. And I, I could actually validate it because if there was no God, then nothing would happen to me. So, like I said, I'm going to be very transparent with you. So, the reality is, so I, I got on my knees. I prayed. And I remember this like yesterday. I remember exactly where I prayed. I remember how long I kind of stood there. And I wish I could tell you that this beaming, amazing light came to me or an angel came down or light, you know, started filling the room. Nothing happened like that. But I did say these three things. Uh, number one, I said, um, you know, I promise you that if, if you do answer me, uh, I won't ever question you ever again. So I said that. Um, so if you answer these, these questions, but it's going to be three things that I want. So it's almost like a genie almost, but uh, I didn't mean it to be like that. It was just the fact that I wanted to help people and uh, I kept all my promises and he kept his. So one of the first things I said, I said, you know, God, if you're really there, 
helped me to become an influential per, uh, person in military school. So the highest influence would be a, what they call a battalion commander, the highest, the highest ranking officer in the whole entire school, right? And I was, I think, third in command. And uh, th- yeah, I was third in command. And uh, that was one of my goals. When I, um, when I went to military school, I was very intrigued by the highest in command, but I never got there. I got to third. But I was praying. I said, look, if I could really do some influence, like really impact people and let them know that I got from 0.2 GPA to mili- highest military grade, then um, it would really make an impact on people. And I know that story will, will help people. But, and that was the first thing. The second thing I asked for is that in order for my words to be gold, there was this thing called an annual federal inspection. And I asked there, and basically like about six or seven generals from the military, the army, they come down and they basically test certain things uh, in school. One of the things they test for is sort of like um, how clean our barracks are, number one. Number two, the drill, uh, they have like a drill team, have to do a presentation in front of them. It has to be perfectly flawless. Then we have a presentation about school history, things like that. And, um, you know, there was some really high numbers, 98 plus, 98% plus was actually on the line there. So I have to, I was asking, I said, if I really want my words to be gold, people to believe me that I have strong conviction that they can change their life. We have to beat all these numbers. Um, And so the, like, help me to have a really high AFI uh, score, um, higher than than anything in history. So that way people can actually believe what I say. And so that was my second thing that I asked. And the third thing I asked is, is like, it sounds kind of funny, but uh, I was looking for a partner. I was looking for someone that could give me comfort and someone that could, uh, I, I even know, I said, I said, look, if I get to that position and I, and I get to that high in annual federal inspection, I probably am going through a lot of stress and I probably need someone to like be a friend, you know? And this is what happened. Literally uh, nothing happened in that room. I walked away, but I still had faith that he'd answer me. That's, that's key, right? I still had faith that I'm like, well, I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm going to be patient. You know, he's been patient with me if I'm, I'm not that great a person. So he's been patient with me. Why can't I be patient with him? So I just sat there and I basically was, was just asking, you know, like, uh, I was just kept in my mind. I'm like, he's going to answer. I, I know he's going to answer. And what happened was amazing. Nothing short of a miracle, but three months later, two months later, um, I had the highest ranking position in the school. And it was interesting because there were like moments where, uh, there would be, you know, 12 people who would say, you know, they'd say, okay, so out of all you guys who want to do the parade, who wants to lead the parade, right? And it was like something pushed me to like raise my arm up. I remember it like very clearly where I was, I'll do it. And it was so fast. And I remember, all right, well, Emmanuel's going to do it. Emmanuel do this, Emmanuel do this. And it was only time before it actually happened that actually I became the number one officer. So part of the prayer was, was uh, answered. The second one was, I was asking if, if it's, uh, so the second thing is we actually got 99.9% on the annual federal inspection, 99.9%. It's the highest in 90 years military school. And then the third thing was, is that I met a girl, her name was Michelle and, uh, she was a very nice Presbyterian lady. And, uh, you know, we had different faiths, but we both believed in God and she would always leave a voicemail every single morning. I would wake up and I'd be cold near the beach and like at six o'clock in the morning and before she went to school, she would leave a voicemail for me and it would be something positive, an optimistic poem, uh, a great quote, something, but it was almost every single day, Monday through Friday, she left some positive message. And it was then when I realized I said, everything was answered. And I remember also at the end of the prayer, I said, if I ever do get these awards, like, let me stay humble. Let me like, you know, and it's interesting that these awards that I've had are like in my closet. They're not even hung up anywhere in my room. And I kept my promise. I said, I'm not going to just show off for people. I'm going to just put it away and stash it away. And so uh, I just want to let you know that I know that there is a God and I know that he answered me. In fact, it was so humbling. Um, when we had to do a, um, a speech for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I wasn't really a great public speaker. And I remember the first time I spoke in front of 300 people. And I remember how my words just came out of my mouth and I was able to speak boldly, even though my hands, my hands were shaking. I remember the first time I spoke to, to the, to the cadets. And I remember like that I, I spoke like a lion. I remember that. I and mean, even, even my friend, one of my best friends, Joe at the time, he said, he said, uh, hey man, that was, that was some pretty powerful stuff. Like, did you prepare for that? I said, no, I didn't. Um, it just came out naturally. 
And then little by little, I started gaining more courage speaking in front of people. And then also there was a part where I was like, look, I, the one thing I am nervous about is seven generals seeing our military history done by me with a uh, sort of a clicker and also a, a red laser pen and do, you know, like we were getting very professional with our presentation. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, uh, I can't do, I'm so nervous. And I, I think I believe I was, I was crying near a bench near where I was doing the presentation. I was just so, so nervous and the anxiety was at the highest level. And then at the corner of my eye, when I was crying, there was somebody who was walking by. He was a TAC officer from the military. A lot of military people worked there. And he came up to me and says, why are you crying? And I'm like, I'm like, I can't, I'm so nervous about this. I'm getting anxiety. And he says, you know what, man, you're, you're in good luck. And I said, why? He's like, because I took speaking classes in college and debate classes. And um, I can show you, I can, I can give you some tips. I can help you out. So it was, it was little moments like that where... Even at the, at the parade, the last parade where the generals were inspecting us, something went terribly wrong. And then some voice told me, it's like, do this, do this, do this. And then, and then I had to stop everything and then make something completely switch 180. And it was just off the cuff. And I, and I, I, was, like, I was like, I didn't come up with that. Uh, there was something else pushing me and helping me out. And so I just know that there's, there was some higher source, some, some beautiful... Um, heavenly intervention happening. Uh, and so I know that there is a God and I promised him that I would never deny that. And so if you've ever wondered, there's a really great uh, scripture in James it says, in James 1, 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask of God who giveth to, to, to men liberally and abradeth not, which means we have the birthright to ask if God actually exists in the first place. And you have the birthright to know for yourself that you don't have to depend on flesh and blood, people that you know. You can actually ask for yourself and you can get an answer for yourself. It's, it's going to come a, a very unique way to you. Every, everyone's answer is different. But uh, once you know, it'll be something uh, of strong conviction. It'll be uh, a spirit to spirit type of um, feeling where uh, you'll just know. And with such conviction that no one can change it. And I have that conviction. I've, I've, I've seen too much to know that God does not exist. Uh, that, that God does exist. I've, I've actually had too much conviction on that. And you can receive that too. So that's my message for today is what is your birthright? Your birthright is that there is an umbilical cord attached to you that is connected to heaven. And you have, you have all rights to pull on that umbilical cord and, and, ask for, and ask for help and be able to see if there is a loving God there for you. And so I want to leave that, my testimony with you that I know that this is true. Hopefully, hopefully there's someone out there that, that really uh, resonated with my story. And um, I know that... Uh, you know, his son, uh, Jesus Christ, the savior, uh, came for us all. And, uh, and I know that, um, he wanted to assist us with becoming better people so that we can return back to where we're supposed to be. And so, uh, like I said, I usually don't talk spiritual terms, but today I just felt like someone needed to hear this, that if you ever do have, if you ever do question, he's a lot closer than you think. And, uh, I believe that God has a mission for you and that if you just ask, you will find out what it is if you keep your mind open. So with that, hopefully you enjoyed the message. Um, you know, subscribe below if, if you find uh, value in this. I usually uh, do energy healing uh, videos, but uh, this one I just wanted to do on a more spiritual tone and hopefully it enriched someone. So uh, everyone have a great day and, and uh, look forward to doing another video. Take care. Bye-bye.